In today's video, I've got five facts about Morelia Q. Melromark from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero slash a character analysis video. But hey, if you're new here, why not join the 414 community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And a quick warning that there will be spoilers, so just a heads up. Anyway, with that being said, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. <music> Morelia is the queen of Melramark, and I hope I pronounced Morelia right. <laughs> She's often referred to simply as queen, which I might do. Original, right? As we found out in the anime, in Melramark, it is in fact the queen, not the king, that holds the power and authority over rule of the country. She is a female human between her mid-30s to early 40s, has purple eyes and purple hair tied up in a bob with long bangs at the front. She's fair-skinned and has a great physique. I see why you guys wanted a video on her so much. Noise! As for attire, she dons the very fancy, very finely detailed royal gown. Well, more finely detailed in the light novel and manga art at least. She also has what looks like a bronze breastplate and of course the crown. Looks like a queen to me. Personality-wise, compared to her trash husband, Morelia as a ruler is much more kind, competent and skilled when it comes to negotiations and diplomacy. Though she is a wife and mother, her country comes first. That's not saying that she doesn't care for her family, it's just that her role as queen is her main priority. And because of this, she does act as more of a queen than a mother to her two daughters. Uh, she is also one of the few in Melramark's hierarchy that doesn't discriminate against demi-humans and actively acts to improve their condition of life. As mentioned by Naofumi, Morelia is the only one in the castle that treats demi-humans properly. Melramark was at war with a country called Siltvelts. This war had gone on for centuries, and I mean centuries. Now, I mentioned that earlier she was one of very few in Melramark that treated demi-humans as equals. Siltvelt was the complete opposite, where the demi-humans were the dominant race and would look down on humans and treat them with disrespect. Now, I believe that it was more of a war between races than countries, based on this information, but of course we'll run with countries for now. The Queen decided that she would improve the living conditions in Melramark for demi-humans and built a village for them that was protected. This act actually ended up putting a stop to the ongoing war with Siltvelt, who also built a village for human protection in their country. This peace would last a decade, however war would break out between the two nations again. And I tried to find out why exactly war broke out between the two countries again, but couldn't find anything. So if you know, then of course let us know in the comments, just mark it as spoilers if it happens to be so. During her early years, the Queen fell in love with a man that rose from being nothing more than a common soldier to becoming the spear hero. That man we now know as Trash, obviously. And of course I'll probably do a video on him soon, but it turned out that he also was revealed to be a legitimate heir of Forbley, who happens to actually be the most powerful country in this world. Handy to have them as an ally, I guess. Morelia's Japanese voice actress is Kikuko Inoue. She has voiced other characters such as Lust in Full Metal Alchemist, Miki Hiragi from Lucky Star, Cecile Krumi in Code Geass, Akane Sonozaki from Higurashi, and more. Now, Morelia's English voice actress has not been announced at the time of this video's release, so I don't have any information on her yet, but of course, there will be a voice actress for her. So I mentioned earlier that her role as queen comes before her family roles, but what are her relationships with her husband and two daughters? So, Trash Husband, back when he won the queen's heart, used to be a very highly respectable king, one that she actually quoted as being amazing. He went by the name The Wise King, but since the birth of Malty or Bitch, the Queen now feels shame towards him rather than the pride she once held. Going back to the amazing quotes, it was actually that he used to be amazing before the birth of their first daughter, who he spoiled. Now, prior to the current four heroes showing up, the King was given authority of the country while the Queen was away, to which he acted recklessly and was easily manipulated by Malty, bitch, to the point where he made a huge mess of the country that put the nation into a political mess. The Queen had to make many diplomatic sacrifices and spent two months plus sorting out this mess. Enraged, of course, is an understatement. Timeline-wise, once she arrived back at the castle after these events was the same time that she stripped him and her daughter of their royal status. 
Her relationship with Malty, awkward and hostile at best. She noticed her daughter's bitch personality slash selfish actions early on and tried sorting her out by sending her to school abroad. Now, instead of reforming Malty's behaviour, the only change after she returned was that she wasn't a virgin anymore. Huh. The Queen tried and tried again to get her daughter on the right path, but the more that she tried to help, the worse Malty got. Now, Malty inherited her mother's cunning, but in the bad sense. She would use that for all her manipulative schemes. It got that bad for the Queen that she would burn statues and portraits of her husband and Malty just to quell her rage. Not messing with that chick. Nope. Nope. So, because of all the things wrong with Malty, the Queen decided to name her second daughter Melty as Mel Remarks' heir to the crown. Melty was the polar opposite of her sister and, because of this, was obviously favoured by the Queen. Melty spent a lot of her time with her mother rather than her father. Though the Queen was way more caring towards Melty, she would not hold back when it came to using Melty as a political tool. Interestingly enough, she actually spent a lot of time trying to convince Naofumi to marry and even impregnate Melty, not at this time but later on though you know this was done out of pure love for melty i suppose the mother side kicked in she just wanted to help her daughter who was obviously attracted to naofumi oh So, just like I did with her family, I thought it'd be cool to look into her relationship with the four heroes. The Queen has two great interests. One, Philolols, and the other, the four legendary heroes. However, with our current bunch of heroes, she is actually very disappointed because they don't live up to the great heroes that have been summoned in the past. Disappointed in all but one, of course. Obviously Naofumi, the shield hero. So, the Queen is very much aware of her first daughter's twisted ways and knew that Naofumi was innocent of the crimes he had been framed for. In fact, she knows how how important the shield hero is and actually wrote to her husband to tell him to take special care of Naofumi and to get him on their side, which he obviously ignored. Trash. And she plays much more of a part in Naofumi's actions than we first thought. Did you know that she actually planned out the events of him purchasing a slave, though she did not expect him to choose Raftalia. She also actually let a lot of his initial actions slide, down to the fact that she could understand his current emotions. Even placing Melty under his care was all part of her master plan. But I think there's more to Naofumi than even she thought. She now sees him as someone of value for political reasons. Though she did not expect him to choose Raftalia, it actually works out perfect for her and the country as this keeps the demi-human countries from attacking them. Of course, if Naofumi decides to uh, stay on their side, of course. Now, the two of them have an understanding in the fact that the Queen provides Naofumi with what he needs to combat the waves and he, in turn, will not abuse or take advantage of this situation. Not just this, but personality-wise, the two seem to understand each other pretty well. The only thing she really wants from him is to become her son-in-law or to be the father of her grandchild. Pretty awkward. Don't know how Roth Talia would feel about that. Doubt she'd be happy. No. Anyway, thanks for watching this is my video. Five facts about Morelia Q. Melramark from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more characters from this series, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, as it really does help these videos reach a wider audience and subscribe for more anime content. Till next time, my fellow weebs. Peace.